So yeah, so welcome to today's episode. I'm excited to have you guys here. Today we're going to talk about something that is actually kind of recent. Um, so most of you know the story of Black Girl Creative and how it was really just kind of founded like off the backs of other podcasts I created. So if you didn't know, there was um, the Fool Project, which was for creatives in general. Um, Black Girls Make Music, which is for Black women in the music industry, independent specifically. Um, what else? The Experimental Photographer and... Hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Either way, I had all these different podcasts and I really felt like I had to fraction myself off and like to do these separate topics because no one wants to hear about photography that's musicians. But I really realized that a lot of the messaging in my podcast were the same. And so I took this course and this lady was like, you are the brand. Like, it's okay for you to be multi-passionate and to talk about that in on your podcast. And so since that experience, I felt really free to be able to, you know, just talk about whatever I want to talk about on my podcast and, um, and about creativity in general. Like, I know that I'm not the only one who is multi-passionate. I know I'm not the only one who has multiple interests, um, who may be a painter and a singer or like a photographer. And, you know, I don't know a sculptor, whatever it is, um, I know I'm not the only one. And so I'm going to have an episode on that later. But today I want to talk about the five pillars of being a Black girl creative or the five pillars of Black girl creative, right? So when the when Black girl creative first started, I wasn't really thinking about pillars. Like I wasn't really, I was just like just doing stuff, right? But I realized that I needed pillars so that I can stay like on focus, like on brand and on topic, um, talk about things that are important to Black Girl Creatives. And so I made a list and it um, initially only had four things. So there was creativity, community, storytelling, and holistic healing, right? And so we're going to get into those things in a second. But then um, more recently, I realized that a part was missing from Black Girl Creative and it was giving and service. And so now we have the five pillars of Black Girl Creative, which is creativity, community, storytelling, holistic healing, and giving and service. So giving and service is kind of its own category um, because they kind of go hand in hand. So let's get started. So the first pillar is creativity. Creativity, clearly like Black Girl Creative is all about creativity, right? So we believe that we are all creative because God is creative. So we are made in God's image. The very first attribute given to God in the Bible is that of a creator, you know, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created, right? In the beginning, God created. And um, because we are made in his image, we create too. You know, you look at Adam when he was given the rules of the garden and he was given his tasks. Um, he was tasked with naming animals. He was tasked with keeping the garden, like tending to the garden. And so that requires some creativity, right? That requires some skill to be able to do those things. And so because we're made in the image of God, we create when we don't even think about it, right? So whether you create a meal or a lesson or you create a home a child, or like a painting, we all have the gift to create. We all have it. Um, you know, and it's amazing because kids are born without even the knowledge of themselves, like, right? Like, so like kids are born, you know, I don't know, just even not having an idea of who they are, like as far as like God's child, but they know inherently that they are creative because they create all the time. They make forts into castles and they make, you know, their outdoors into like a battlefield and like the wild west and you know, they take their Barbies and they tell stories. Like, we don't have to teach kids how to be creative. And that kind of goes into my next part, my next um, sub part of creativity. You know, we play and we have fun when we're kids and we're creating all along. But somewhere along the way, we feel like, oh, I'm not creative because I'm not an artist, right? And whatever the definition of an artist is for you or for another person, you start to kind of judge yourself and you're like, well, I don't create like this person creates. So I'm not really creative and that's just not true. You know, even if you're creating math problems, right? Or solving for X, that requires creativity, that requires skill. Um, and so we also believe that play and fun are the best ways to rescue your inner child and give yourself permission you need to create and dream freely. So we all have an inner child. I don't really think we ever stop being childlike. First of all, God wants us to be childlike and not childish because there's a difference, but he wants us to be childlike. He wants us to be filled with awe and wonder. Like I think about you know, babies, when they're born, everything is new to them. Everything is just like amazing and brilliant and just like magical, right? And so the older we get, we lose that sense of wonder and awe. And so, you know, I feel like sometimes it mourns God that like 
oh snap, like, do they not even appreciate my creations? Like I create a new sunset every day. I create a new sunrise. I, you know, the birds are singing in the morning. I gave them their song, you know, the colors on the leaves when they fall in the, in, the, in the autumn. Like these are the little things that we miss out on every single day because we're just like, oh, I've seen it all before. Or, you know, that's just what happens. But I really feel like child's child, children have that childlike awe and wonder. And so as we get older, we lose that sense of, awe and wonder. And I really feel like it's imperative to our healing to be able to tap back into those inner, inner children that we are, that we have, and to give ourselves to permission to create and dream freely. You know, people are like, well, I'm stuck. I'm creatively stuck. And so I feel like the answer to that is to go back to your childhood self, to rescue yourself, to allow God to rescue that child-like self. Um, and uh, it's crazy because, you know, the older we get, we're like, oh, we're more mature and we're like, established and all this stuff when kids have it right the whole time like yes there are things that we have to learn like we have to tailor back our tempers we have to you know learn maturity and all that good stuff but I feel like we should learn maturity and marry that with our childhood selves and there's an interview that um or a conversation I had with my friend Jordan and um he's an artist and I want to share that here again I've, I think I've shared it on other podcasts but I want to share it here but it's really just about like being a child and no it's not another woman that I interview but it's really us just having a deep conversation about how we lost our childhood self. So I think I'm gonna share that with you all, with you all um, on the next episode, but going on, you know. Um, so with Black Girl Creative, because we believe so much in creativity um, and what creativity can do for ourselves, which we'll get into later, but for others as well, um, we, we offer workshops, classes, and journeys to learn a new skill, to learn hobbies, and to try things that you're interested in. So what you'll see in Black Girl Creative is yes, We'll talk about creativity here on the podcast, but beyond that, we're starting to have events. We're starting to have get-togethers and really I'm um, focusing on being creative, rescuing, rescuing our creative selves, and being able to heal through our creativity and heal our creative selves and heal our child, child self. Like, you know, we wonder why we're so afraid to put our stuff out there. We wonder why, like, why can't I get over this thing? Why can't I not get unstuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I so stuck? And sometimes the reason why we're stuck is because of something that happened in the past, something that happened, you know, when we were 10 that we forgot about. Um, I know someone who in fourth grade, their teacher made fun of them by putting them under their desk. Like that was their punishment. Like they had to sit under the desk, which is like cruel. But anyway, um, and because of that moment, she never wanted to put herself out there ever again because she didn't want to be embarrassed because she didn't want to be humiliated ever again. And um, that was her that was her tactic to protect herself. That was her tactic to, you know, if no one's going to protect this child, I'm going to protect myself. And so she went through life, you know, she went through life trying to protect herself, but then realizing something was missing, like this creative part of myself, I'm missing. And so we're in the process of going together to rescue that childhood self. And, and the person I'm speaking about is my mom. The person I'm speaking about is is her. And it's amazing to see her progress now. Um, making soap and, you know, just making things because it makes her feel good. It makes her come alive. Like that creative spark has been reignited after, you know, honestly, after 50 something years. And so my whole point in saying that is that it's never too late to reignite that creative flame. It's never too late to go back and rescue that child self. And seeing her play around and seeing her experiment and being a child again is so healing and is so encouraging and refreshing to me to see that in her. And so I'm inspired by her and I'll be sharing her story soon here as well. Um, but yeah, like for yourself, are there things that you are neglecting, are trying to protect the childhood self, that, the child self that you are, you know? For myself, you know, I was made fun of by a lot of friends and I was abandoned by a lot of friends. I was hurt by a lot of friends. And so because of that, it's been really hard for me to share my stuff because I don't want to be rejected again. And I know that's like the, the source of my, um, of my fear is rejection. And so I have to go back and do the work and also like give it to God to do the work. But also I have to go back and be like, you know, you're not rejected. I accept you. God accepts you. Do that work to be able to put my art out there in the first place. Doing this podcast, right? There are people who could leave horrible comments about this. There are people who could be like, this is trash. Like somebody left a one star review for this podcast on um, Apple Podcasts. And, um, you know, at first I was like, oh, no, like, no, like, I, you know, they didn't like whatever. But it's just like, no, they're just not for me. They're just not my people. And that's OK, because I there are podcasts that I don't listen to 
And it's not that I don't like them or their message. They're just not my people. They're just not speaking to the person that I am. And that is okay. So for yourself, again, check in with yourself and see if there's a child self inside of you that you've left behind. You know what I mean? And we'll do more work on that in the future, in, in the workshops and in the classes and all this other stuff. Um, but yeah, I just want you to consider that as we start to go in um, to creativity. And then lastly, we believe that creativity isn't just for ourselves, but also for others. So, you know, creativity is something that's sacred, is something that's a gift from God, but also it's something that should be shared with other people. And so in the next episode, we'll get into community, which is the next pillar. But creativity is for others. We create to give to other people. We create to create, you know, things for other people, you know, things for other people to enjoy. You know, you look at God and again, we're made in God's image. So this makes sense. But God makes things. He doesn't have, he didn't have to make a world. He didn't have to make people. He was fine by himself. He was whole by himself, right? But it brought him pleasure to create us. It brought him pleasure to see us enjoy the sunsets that he creates, to enjoy the music that he creates, right? And in the same way, because we're made in his image, we take pleasure in seeing someone else enjoy something we create or something we make for them or get for them or buy for them, whatever it is, something we give them. We find pleasure in that. And so, Think about like parents, like when they buy their kids, you know, toys for Christmas, when they see their kids open that present and the joy on their faces, parents are lit up inside. And, it, and it's really like, it's not necessarily giving anything directly to the parent, right? Like, except for pleasure in having their child enjoy something that they gave them. You know what I'm saying? And so for us, we are most fulfilled when other people take pleasure in what we create, when other people, our lives are made better. You know what I'm saying? Like, you being a carpenter to make money is great, right? But if you take a personal project where you're making um, houses and buildings for people who are homeless, even though even those people even though those people can't give you money or can't give you you know the same amount of money that other people who are wealthy can, right? It would give you great pleasure to serve those people. And this is just an example because you know that you're doing good. You know you're putting good out into the world. You know you're putting good um, out into God's peoples and God's pe- out into God's people. And so we really have to start looking at community and figure out how we can use our creativity in community to make community better. And so that's the whole point. Um, Creativity is a beautiful gift from God. We are creative because God is creative. You are creative. You are creative. Like, it's not a question, right? Like, you create meals in the morning. You problem solve all day long. We we solve millions of problems every single day. And millions might be a million might be a hyperbole, but you get the point. You know, it's like, oh, what should I eat for breakfast? Cooking breakfast. Oh, my child is, you know, on the floor screaming and crying. How can I appease them? How can I make them feel better? Oh, you know, my car won't start. Or, you know, which way should I go to work? Like, these are all, this is all creativity at play. Creativity is something that we need in our lives because if we didn't have it, we'd be dead, to be quite honest. (laughs) To be quite honest, doctors are creative. Trying to figure out, you know, the best solution for an illness. Or scientists trying to figure out, you know, to solve for this thing or like figure out whether, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I shouldn't have even said that example, but trying to figure out if this solution and this solution come together and create one thing, you know, my mother creating soap in her kitchen, like, okay, I do this and I, and I'm learning this, but let me try this color. Let me try this scent. Let me see if this looks good. Let me see if this works. We're all creative. And it's because we're made in God's image. And that creativity was gifted to us because we are Again, made in his image and he gifted it to us because he knows how much pleasure it is to create. Like when you create something, it feels so good. Like it just feels good. You get in the zone. It's almost like you're put into a meditative state. You know what I'm saying? And and so that's wonderful. But it's even better when other people can enjoy what you're creating as well. So this is what I want you to take with you for the rest of your day. How are you creative? In what ways do you miss your childhood self? In what ways have you abandoned your childhood self? And it's not too late to go get her. It's not too late to go rescue her. And to, you know, I understand that your childhood self may have got you, gotten you in trouble, right? Like that example I gave about my mother who her teacher punished her and put her under the desk and was like, and I'm sure in her mind she said something like, you know, being this way gets me in trouble. So I'm never going to be that way ever again. I'm never going to put myself out there ever again. Right. And we think that we're doing the best, the best thing. And I get it because of survival. But then you go back and you realize I'm unfulfilled because I've left my childhood self behind. So my question to you at the, again, at the end of this episode is how can you be more childlike? In what ways can you go back and rescue your child? And let's do that work. 
Okay, so this was the first pillar, creativity, and you are creative, so don't even question it anymore. Um, but yeah, really think about those questions and I will see you next episode. Again, please check out Loray on Instagram. I'll put her information in the description so you can check her out and give her a follow. And until next episode, you guys, keep creating, keep making things because you and your art, your story, all that good stuff, all that good stuff, it matters, okay? So until next episode, y'all, be safe.